So, uh, I have a clicker somewhere. Uh, I'm happy to be here and uh, I have a little disclaimer in the beginning because I'm just a local labor market analyst, yeah? <laughs> Not a pure presenter, I'm rather a researcher and uh, data analyst, so there will be a lot of data and slides with graphs and this kind of uh, information. I'll try to explain what's necessary to understand when it comes to a further education of uh, adult people uh, at work, et cetera, for employment, yeah? Uh, it will be uh, local data in some cases. It's kind of a showcase from Czech Republic put in broader context. And I'll start with the biggest context, context of all. It's uh, demographics for uh, the globe, for this uh, world, yeah? We see from the estimates that global population will start to uh, stop growing or decline, maybe, in some scenarios. And the global growth of population will stop by the end of century. In some countries, uh, I have to point somewhere. <laughs> okay. Just give me a guide where I have to point. Oh, okay. Not working, yeah? So give me a minute. Hmm. Next slide. Next slide, and you can put slide and then try to fix it. Yeah, please. Sure. So give me the next slide, please, if it's possible. Yeah. In some countries, you can see uh, it will be a dramatic uh, development. Uh, let's say Korea or Italy. It will be steady decline in number of uh, people living in that country. Uh, Maybe it will half in Korea by the end of century. In most of Europe, it's, it's, it's the same story. Uh, United States, a it's a different story because there is a huge immigration uh, from the south, so it's uh, working better for your country. And I guess uh, you are uh, like uh, uh, having some uh, good outcome, outcomes from that. It's not only bad thing, uh, the immigration. We have, uh, yeah, because you... Uh, when you see the list of uh, population superpowers changing, and it will be, for example, for China, it will be dramatic, yeah? The number of uh, working age population will maybe half by the end of century, so it's really dramatic. So we are talking about how to keep the people working if they can, and we have to give them some good prospect in employment, yeah? In Europe, it's kind of a different story. It will not only be about the decline of population, because we have immigration as well, right now, uh, because of the war in Ukraine, because of Russian aggression. I hate that thing, yeah? And we see uh, all the impacts on us. But it's about the changing structure. Uh, you can see the number of people coming to Europe from Ukraine itself. It's uh, 4.5 million people right now, so it's a huge number of people especially in Czech Republic, Poland, or Eastern Europe, it's uh, kind of a huge thing, yeah? Okay. Okay. Uh, when we talk about generations and changing structures, yeah, you see uh, almost every time we talk about people in the labor market, we uh, talk about Gen Z, yeah? Right now, everybody is talking about Gen Z. Because globally, Gen Z is the biggest part of population not in Europe, yeah, in other parts of the world. Uh, when we talk about a global boom of uh, population, it's a different story for a different part of the world. And uh, let's say the real baby boom started 30 years ago in majority of the world, yeah? Not in Europe, it's uh, the 50s, 60s, 70s, in Czech Republic, 70s. Uh, you see the structure, Gen Z in, pardon, Gen Z in India is the majority, Gen Z in Italy is the minority, yeah? When we see the Czech data, here you can compare the actual structure of people aged 18 to 64, so you see 100,000 uh, graduates each year, compared to almost 200,000 people aged 40 to 50, and compared to 100, 30, 40,000 people uh, declining, uh, going to uh, retirement, yeah? So leaving the labor market. So right now, the proportion is 1.3 1, 1 to one graduate, leaving the market and entering the market. And when you see the red line, it's projection for next 10 years, it's moving forward. So it will be two to one, yeah? 
For one graduate, we will have two people leaving the market. So it will be really hard to find anybody working yeah, to replace the people leaving the market, to replace the skilled ones, yeah, to keep them working. So the story will be not only about how to uh, engage those youngs and uh, understand their needs, it will be more about engaging those, those older yeah, and uh, enabling them working uh, well till the retirement and maybe motivate them to stay longer, yeah? even if they don't have any obligation to stay. Yeah? Because right now in Czech Republic we had a, a let's say, trial. Uh, the government tried to push people working longer and it was really uh, met with a huge uh, uh, opposition from the people from the opposition. Yeah? So uh, it will be rather about the soft motivation, how to enable them working well till uh, the age when they will retire. Yeah? So please uh, remember this data and the overall data for whole population in, uh, in the world when we talk about the next things, about employment, education, further education at work. Yeah? Because all the time this come, comes to in, in, the, in the picture. Yeah? I have one, uh, okay, I have one, uh, 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 how to say, uh, advice, yeah, try to make mental uh, uh, exercise, try to imagine there are like positions for graduates and it's not only for those young after the high school, after the uh, university degree uh, completement, yeah position for graduates or junior positions might be even for the 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, yeah? because they will change jobs uh, naturally, because the whole world is changing all the time. They need to adapt as well. They will continue working the longest possible. Yeah? So just remember that. It's about this uh, mindset. And not saying that we don't have to uh, uh, like uh, discriminate people uh, regarding their age, uh, ethnicity, uh, etc., uh, female, males, etc. Yeah, because it's really a huge thing in our part of Europe right now. Okay, so this was the bigger context. Uh, let's go to companies. Uh, this is the survey from Czech Republic. Uh, we had tough year last year, 2023, because it was uh, some kind of stagnation and decline in economy. We are uh, one of few economies uh, who didn't recover after COVID, so we have some tough times, especially because we are low income economy. You can see that many companies declare that uh, times are hard for them right now, and the impact of the crisis around uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, COVID, post COVID, etc., is really huge. But when it comes to the future, in five years, uh, majority believes they will uh, uh, regenerate and they will grow uh, uh, really, really well. Yeah? Because uh, the last five years uh, was the time of adaptability, starting with COVID. It was the huge exercise, worldwide exercise in adaptability. Yeah? So those companies who survived just know they can adapt and they will benefit from the changes around the world. They will adapt for sure. So they believe in that study. When it comes to the risks, uh, we can see that they state inflation, raising prices, whatever, all the incomes are more complicated and more expensive for them. But you can see as well in the third place that for two thirds of companies, even right now in the very hard year last year, it was about the insufficient number of people, those qualified people in position of specialist, etc. It was unable for them to hire people, to replace people, even though they hired less last year, slightly less. Yeah? The Czech market is drawn from people. Yeah? Everybody who can work is right now working, except some groups which are discriminated in the labor market, and we need to find ways how to uh, uh, engage them as well. Yeah? So you can see one of the biggest risks is uh, insufficient number and quality of people uh, when it comes to qualification. Uh, how companies want to uh, solve the situation right now, the economic uh, forces, uh, the changes in environment, business environment as well, and all the things coming to them. You can see some companies are cost cutting. It's the minority, uh, let's say marketing, the equipment, uh, buildings, etc. Some things and stuff that can be cut uh, in short term with no major uh, influence. 
but more often the companies are declaring investment and especially investment in terms of uh, increasing efficiency of business yeah so it's really kind of a clever investment in raising efficiency of the business you can see the fields uh, here uh, it's about the salaries because the cost of work is rising due to inflation due to co uh, raising uh, living costs it's about technology uh, manufacturing technologies, uh, AI, applications, new applications and tools at work. It's mostly about the technologies. But you can see as well, 40% of companies are declaring that they will invest more in uh, further education of employees. They need to help employees to adapt to all the changes happening right now. Yeah? In fact, in the last five years, uh, the investment in uh, further education uh, via companies raised uh, uh, by 100% in Czech Republic. It doubled in five years. Yeah? It was started with COVID, but it continues right now because the changes are so deep and so quickly happening. Uh, okay, when it comes to uh, further education and technology interconnected, we usually tend to think about generative AI and the tools uh, uh, applied at, at businesses. Yeah? Right now, the, the uh, adoption of these uh, technologies is not so fast at, as we tend to think. Yeah? You can see that overall in Europe, it's 8% companies using on daily basis some application of uh, generative AI. In Czech Republic, it's 6 to 7%. Yeah? Uh, furthermore, uh, there is a study of the adoption of new technologies in the United States. It's really interesting. You can see uh, the adoption of electric power, the personal computers. It's the green uh, squares and uh, blue triangles. And the AI in first two years and in first 20 years. And you can see that the rate of adoption is similar to electricity. So it's not that fast as we, as we tend to think. It will take maybe 20 years till most of the businesses will use applications of generative AI in the, on a daily basis in some business operations, yeah? But it will for sure change the employment and people need to adapt. But we have some time, so I always, I always tell, don't panic, we have time, but we need to think about it. We need to find ways how to uh, uh, work with new tools uh, well. Yeah, and we need to help people to adapt, to shift in what they do, how they do it, with what tools, yeah, to be able to be employed in the future. Because if we don't, many people will be pushed out of the market or maybe to the really low skill positions with uh, not good uh, conditions. Yeah? And it will force them maybe towards uh, populists and other uh, danger uh, streams in the, in the society. Yeah? Okay, so we have some time but it's happening fast. Uh, when I talk about the impact of generative AI on the labor market, I found interesting this study of Accenture from 2023. It was uh, in the beginning of the first applications of large language models. You can see that there is uh, some portion of job task which can be automated. So if you think uh, like uh, uh, simply about the impact, it's about less people will maybe do the same or more work, but not only, because it's a really simple view of that, there is more space for uh, uh, change of job roles, of interconnection, of some specializations, of new specializations as well. So I'm always trying to explain, it's not about the, the fact that we will hire maybe less on some job roles and positions. Much more people will need further education and reskilling, upskilling. Yeah? Uh, for one job role loss, there will be one new or maybe even more new job roles and many people will need to shift in what they do and how they do it. Yeah? The specialization will change over the next 20 years. It will be a huge thing. So it will be not about only hiring less, but helping more people in companies to develop and uh, make some professional and career changes. Yeah, this is the biggest thing coming with the generative AI. It was almost the same with all other technologies coming to human development. Yeah? Electricity, mobile phones, uh, internet, etc. It always led to more people working with more specialization and with more further education. So keep it in mind, we will need to help people a lot. 
Okay, so how it uh, is right now when it comes to further education of adults? This is the data from Eurostat from 2022. It's for people 25 plus uh, to 64 years old. You can see that the average is around 45% can learn something new formally or non-formally uh, at work or beside work uh, over past 12 months. Uh, Czech Republic is just uh, under the average slightly, and some countries, let's say Nordic countries, they are highly above average with 60-70% of people learning something new in past 12, past 12 months. It seems great. Almost half of the people can learn something new in developed countries. It seems great, yeah? When it comes to intensity, so it means we catch the people learning something new last month, yeah? So they really learn uh, like intensively during the year. It's less uh, interesting and less good for people. Yeah, you can see that, uh, for example, Czech Republic with 10% or Germany with 10%, it's a sad story. Only 10% of people are learning something new uh, last month. With some countries, uh, really adaptive countries like Nordic countries, Finland, uh, Netherlands, uh, Denmark, uh, who has more than 20, 25%, almost 30% of people learning uh, even past uh, last month. Yeah? So this is a different story. The adaptability is much better in those countries than in those countries. And Czech Republic and uh, some parts of the world are really behind uh, the, the grade. Yeah? OK. When it comes to further education, more data from Eurostat, it's the bigger picture. It's exclusive. We need to understand right now it's exclusive. Remember uh, the structure of population in the developed countries. Yeah? It's aging, it's older. And we see that the older can't uh, learn that much, that often. Yeah? Even though uh, people from cities with higher education and the younger have more opportunities to learn because they are chosen. They are, if they try, they will get there. When the older tries, they don't. Yeah? They are often discriminated. Yeah? They, they, we tend to think that the older can't learn anything new, that they did something 20 years and they will do it next 20 years, but they won't yeah? because the job role will change for sure. Yeah? So maybe they will be pushed to forced retirement, and we can't afford that in many countries, in most of the developed world, yeah? So it's really exclusive. Okay. Uh, now, here is the case study from Czech Republic. It's about satisfaction, motivation at work, and the major influence in, in this uh, field, satisfaction and motivation, yeah? Here you can see uh, the structure of satisfaction and motivation at work from Czech employees. It's from the regular survey we do twice per year uh, in September, in April, each year from 2015. So we have uh, uh, the time, uh, uh, you know, the time, the development in time as well. Uh, it seems pretty nice, yeah? One third satisfied, motivated, 40% dissatisfied. You will tend to think those dissatisfied will change jobs. Not all of them do, because many of them don't feel they can. Yeah? And uh, pardon, I will come back. And not all those satisfied and motivated stay. Many of them will get good job offers and they will leave, even though they are satisfied in, at work. Yeah? OK. The development past several years, it was really extreme in Czech Republic due to COVID, due to inflation, due to raising living costs. Uh, so we saw a steady decline in motivation, satisfaction, and work. Uh, even uh, amongst the highly qualified people, uh, high, highly skilled, uh, white colors, technical white colors, etc. Yeah? Uh, why it is important? And maybe there is some lead how to uh, explain to managers why they should invest in satisfaction, motivation at work, and maybe even uh, further uh, education. Yeah? Because we have the data for interconnection between satisfaction at work and uh, outcome work. How do, how do people work? How do they uh, deliver uh, what they need to deliver? Yeah? You can see, uh, this is a study with uh, Czech uh, National Institute for Mental Health uh, uh, connected with our company. We did a study together. 
And you can see that those people satisfied at work have around 20% of time at work uh, uh, not used properly. Yeah, they have some 20% of uh, time they are not uh, engaged fully. But those dissatisfied have uh, around 40%, so it's a huge uh, difference. Yeah? When it comes to some uh, pathologies at work, for example, bullying and uh, let's say financial problems, etc., it's more than 50% of time the people are not able to work properly. They are mentally somewhere else. They are dealing with some other issues. Yeah? So it's really nice to have people satisfied and motivated at work because it delivers bigger outcome. Yeah? When it comes to quiet quitting, it's a new thing. It was described some three, four years uh, uh, earlier in the United States. Now it's described in the rest of the world as well. Uh, you can see the hard measure for quiet quitting. For example, the proportion of people who don't want to do anything uh, except the, uh, the, the current uh, job description. Yeah? what they are told. They will do only what they are told, nothing else. They don't ask for any other work. They don't want to move, yeah? And you can see that the proportion is much higher amongst those dissatisfied, dismotivated, yeah? Those satisfied, motivated tend to, uh, like, involve and engage much more. They deliver something new. They try to change things. They try to move forward, yeah? They take it to their hands because they feel they can. Some of the people dissatisfied and demotivated feel they can't change anything. Yeah? They are not given the space to engage, and this is the difference. Yeah? You need to understand that. Okay, when it comes to fields, people declare that are important at work for their satisfaction. This is the declaration. We need to understand what people tend to say when it comes to uh, satisfaction. So they say it's about other people, the colleagues, it's about working conditions, uh, including commuting. Uh, in fact, they choose work uh, based on commuting on the, or they need to uh, uh, change uh, the place of living, which is not so common in Czech Republic. Maybe in the United States it is, but it not, not here. Then it's about the boss. It's about the organization of work and fair compensation, not only the volume, the amount, but also about the fairness. And that, then it's about the job role, how it's interesting, how uh, people can influence what they do and how they do it. Yeah? So these five fields are declared as the major. And you can see, for example, uh, professional and career growth opportunities are declared much less. Yeah? And I will explain why. Yeah? Because it's really declaration against the reality and when we compare the data from the declaration with fluctuation rates and with all the other influence uh, in this big survey with 120 questions, yeah, we can see that those declared uh, fields like uh, people, colleagues, boss, etc., people tend to declare that because they are more satisfied in these fields. Yeah? When, it, uh, when you have like worsened relations with your boss, you will leave early. Yeah? It's a huge impact or influence for leaving. Yeah? So people tend to declare the things that are working better for them right now, and they tend to uh, oversee, not to take into account the things that are not working that well. Yeah? When we see the fields where we can make the biggest improvement when it comes to satisfaction and motivation at work, it comes to organization of work, the fair uh, compensation, the salaries, yeah, the money, because people work for money at first place. They need to make something for a living, yeah? most of the people. But then we have the huge field of further growth, some outlook of employment in the future. Yeah? Better condition in employment over time if they grow somehow at work. Uh, the, pref uh, the preference is to grow in the current company, yeah? especially in Czech Republic. People are really settled in companies. Yeah? They prefer to grow in the current company, but many of them can't. So they are slightly frustrated. Not, uh, they don't know it that much, but they are frustrated. And when it comes to change of jobs, it's one of the biggest influence in there. Yeah? And then it comes to uh, possibility to influence how do I do my work uh, to the values of company, uh, some visions, etc. 
maybe on the edge, uh, the vision of the most of the companies in the developed world is to make more money, nothing else. Yeah? So it's not good. Yeah? We, not, we are not able to explain people how they should work just for us. Yeah? What's the mission? How do we do what we do? What's the benefit for the others? Yeah? And people really, uh, in some deeper uh, space uh, underneath, uh, they really tend to think about those things to be valuable for the others, yeah? not only to make money. Beside that, they want to be valuable for the, for the society and their at least relatives. OK, so how people tend to learn in companies? Right now, in Czech Republic, 45% of people can learn something uh, in uh, company programs of further education. 45% is a good number. But it's almost the same as the Eurostat data. You can see that only 13% of them use it uh, really intensively. The rest is uh, less intensive in the education. Yeah? The primary motivation shifted uh, really, really uh, 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 like shifted a lot over the past five years. Yeah? Right now, the majority of people, 41%, declare they want to learn if they learn to reach to better job position, better job role inside the company, preferably, yeah? To make something better with better conditions to grow professionally, yeah? That's the majority. Uh, five years ago, the majority, 50% of people declared they need to learn uh, not to lose the track, to keep up with what's happening in their field of occupation, yeah? Right now, you can see it's only 35% of people, and uh, one quarter is declaring they learn only because it's obligatory at work, yeah? because we have some regulation, we have some company rules, etc. And it's especially in the eastern part of Europe, it's uh, really present. Yeah? So you can see the motivation shifted a lot. Right now, people, when they learn, they want to see the impact of learning. They want to do something better. Yeah? Uh, when we uh, see the structure of uh, learning activities in Czech companies, it's from the big survey amongst Czech employers in the uh, end of uh, 2022, you can see 80% of all learning activities are obligatory by law or by the company, by the corporate. Yeah? The scale is mostly uh, uh, for all employees, maybe teams, less often one quarter is individual. Yeah? So only 20% is not obligatory, only one quarter is individual. It's mostly about the hard skill, less often it's about soft skills, languages and others. Yeah? It's, uh, I, I would say that the motivation for, for companies to invest in education is mostly about the current job role, about the routine, to do it better, more efficiently right now. They usually don't think about some broader uh, outlook. Yeah? What do people do in, uh, let's, uh, let's say, three or five years? Yeah? They just think about the routines right now. And people are not content with that, yeah? because if they learn, if they invest some energy, if they invest maybe even their money for some further education, they want to see the good impact on their lives, on their work, on their employability. Yeah? When we see the data from Czech employees, how do they see the opportunity for, uh, opportunities for uh, further learning in companies they are working for right now? You can see only 21% 20 of Czech employees state that they have wide opportunities for professional and career growth uh, within companies. 80% don't. Yeah? Only 25% declare they are satisfied with the opportunities for uh, professional and career growth. And only also 25% declare that thanks uh, to the company, to the current job position, to the investment of the company into themselves, their outlook for future employability is better. Yeah? So think about that. 25% think their employability is rising thanks to the company uh, activities and whole life learning. 75% of people think they are stagnating. They are not learning anything new, they are not moving forward, they are doing the routines. And more and more people, they don't just think that they are not able to reach better job opportunities. Much more people start to think they are endangered by the stagnation. 
because you are all the time confronted with the news that everything is changing due to global conflicts, due to technological changes, and it's uh, uh, speeding up, yeah? So the insecurity about if I'm not learning, my employability in the future will be worse is raising across many, many people in the labor market. And let's say one quarter to 30, 45 percent, they want to take it into their hands. They want to choose where they will work, where they will work what they will do, how they will uh, employ in the future. Yeah? Okay. Last set of data. I'm not sure about the time. I see that I have some uh, reminder about time. I usually put my, uh, you know, time stop, but I don't start it, yeah? So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I have 30 minutes, yeah? <laughs> yeah, good, yeah? I always use that trick, yeah? Okay, so let's see the fluctuation in Czech Republic. 14% of people changed jobs last year. You can see the age, age structure. Remember uh, the aging population, the younger change jobs much more often because they are preferred, really heavily preferred. The older are discriminated. They don't try that much because they don't have the experience they can. If they try, they will fail, they will stay, and they will be dissatisfied. They have no place to go. Yeah? So this is a really sad story for many people. I would say you can see the division here, 40 plus. It's 60% of employed population in Czech Republic right now, and they don't change up that much. If they do, they change for better. We have low fluctuation amongst developed countries. We are, we are really settled. If people change jobs, it's two stories. Those dissatisfied change mostly because of uh, relations at work, the people, the approach from managers, etc. Less often it's about only money, less often it's about the quality of job. It's mostly about the relations at work for those half people who changed last year are dissatisfied. Maybe more interesting group is those satisfied who quit on their own for better job opportunity. You can see it's about money, it's about commuting, it's about organization, it's about uh, uh, flexibility at work as well. But one of the strongest influence is better job role. Something more interesting with uh, more opportunities to influence what and how I do at work. The impact itself, yeah? So for, for those satisfied who quit on their own, it's not only about conditions, etc. It's about the outlook for employment to do something better, yeah? It's really strong. Okay. The tendency for changing jobs right now, it's not that high in Czech Republic. You can see only 10% people are actively looking so for something. And it's uh, almost paradox that only 12% of people feel they have a lot of opportunities to change jobs. Also, we have 200,000 vacant jobs and the lowest unemployment in the world right now. Yeah? So the market is drawn, companies are not able to hire, but only 12% of people feel they can change jobs if they would like to, yeah? So it's really a paradox. They don't see the opportunities elsewhere as well. Okay, last two slides only. This is something really important. Uh, when it comes to job security and changes, People in Czech Republic tend to bet on security mostly, but it developed over the past uh, four years, especially because of COVID and war, definitely, because it changed. People felt they need to change to get better, to get better conditions. But you can see the huge development in the field of, uh, this is a scale. I stick to profession or the job role I did in the past, I have experience in, because it's a security for me. 30% of people, and almost 45% of people right now declare they are open to upskilling and reskilling if there are any possibilities to have better outlook for future employment. Yeah? Five years ago, it was less than 20%. Last year, it was one third. Right now, it's almost 45%. People really adapt to the changing conditions in the labor market in the world itself. Yeah? 
They feel the pressure, everything is changing, and they want to keep up. They are open to upskilling, but many of them are not enabled if they learn something new to do it. Yeah? So, some advice is in the end, if I uh, change it, yeah. The outlook for future employment is one of the strongest motive. It comes with the better conditions as well. Yeah, it comes hand in hand. So people want to work better, even though they are 50 years old, 60 years old, they are on the edge of retirement. If they work, they want to have some good outlook. Yeah, you need to deliver them. Yeah, if you don't, I call it uh, education into the wall, yeah? If you force people to learn, learn something and they can't use it for their good, it's learning against the wall, they will crash, they will be dis demotiv demotivated from that, yeah? So we need to interconnect it. If the companies invest, we have to connect the investment in companies learning and development programs with real career growth opportunities. It's not happening that much right now. I know many stories of companies who have employees investing money in their development. They learn something, maybe in the impro, et cetera. They do something new. But when they come to their manager, hey boss, I want to do something else. I learned, for example, project management. I want to shift to another job role aside. They are not enabled to do that. So what they do, it's simple. They find better jobs elsewhere, yeah? And this is the single strongest motive for the companies. If they can't keep the people, if are, they are not able to hire, they are losing a lot of money. They are losing a lot of uh, highly qualified people who they miss in the labor market. Yeah? It's, they are not able to hire uh, uh, the perfect people from the market. They need to develop them inside. Yeah? Okay, so this is the end. The last slide, I put it after my, uh, I wrote, a, I'm not a writer, nothing like that, but I wrote a haiku, yeah? So you have a haiku here, it's the same advice, but in haiku, yeah? Inclusive employment, upskilling for all the people, despite the age, uh, in engaging them, involving them, because if we don't, we will lose them for sure, yeah? And it's a huge loss, so please keep that in mind. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Um, th thank you so much for your uh, very well informed presentation. And yeah, then time management, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But, it, but actually, I don't care. It's you who will have to stay longer to talk with the people, right? Yeah. Yeah. But we have still time for like two questions uh, on the open forum. Uh, I'm a bit confused. Help me understand. Uh, is this about Czech culture or whatnot? So I get your point uh, from a perspective of employer, how I want to solve my future shortage of workers and I've got to work with what I've got and I've got to enable them and upskill them, all that, that buys. I don't get it from the perspective of the people. If you really want to future proof your career and you want to grow, and you have free resources on internet or cheap resources, and um, it's the lowest unemployment, and you can find a better option across the street, why the hell we had such a low score on the chart of I've learned something new in the past months? It's not only in the past months, it's a long-term thing in Czech Republic. It's a long-term thing in uh, Eastern European countries as well. Uh, we did a survey uh, in April this year about these barriers for changing jobs, and it's mostly about money, about savings, about the opportunities to change, and affording uh, the income loss. Yeah? We are not the developing country. I told you that we are a low-income country, and it comes especially to the employees. Yeah? Uh, one third of employees don't have any savings for the income loss, so they can't afford it they need to have security that the change will work for them, yeah? They wait to be fired because they have some benefits when they are terminated in, at work, yeah? They have, they have some compensation for termination, etc. So they wait for the money 
and it's waiting in some cases uh, for the crash of the company. Yeah, we see the examples in Czech Republic. It's Liberty Ostrava, for example. It's manufacturing company, and it's right now it's crashing. It's going into insolvency, and the people waited till the last day at work to be fired with compensation because many of them can't afford that. Yeah, so it's always also about money and some uh, time they are allowed to learn something new. So we see that 75% of people in Czech Republic, if they need to change jobs, it has to happen quickly in terms of three months maximally. Yeah? For, for one third, it has to happen instantly. So those people are betting on the change. If they do, they try to find some new work beside working somewhere else. Yeah? It's like a, a job search at my current work. Yeah? And when they have the job offer from the other company, that's the first time they come to their boss to tell them, hey, job, I have better job offer, so let's talk about the conditions and my uh, outlook here, yeah? And sometimes the current employer is able to keep them, yeah? So the other is uh, uh, dissatisfied with that, yeah? So it's mostly about the economical situation of the, of the households in here, yeah? We are not that rich country, yeah? We are rich only for the investors, not for the household. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Um, I have a question here. Um, I work as a career coach in Germany, and similarly, actually, what you were saying, that the gap between a lot of uh, opportunities kind of being in the market, but people that upskill or retrain are unable to enter the job market. Do you have any solutions or suggestions, policy changes, what's the role of government to helping people that upskill in adult later age to get into these roles? Uh, because we work a lot with retraining, but we don't have talent is the message that we get from the labor market, but people that upskill and train coming from elsewhere than Germany cannot get in these junior positions at age of 35, 40. Okay. Um. I'm always coming uh, to the audience because I can't hear here, yeah? <laughs> so I need to be in the audience to hear uh, the question, yeah? I hope I get it. So, uh, I'm involved uh, with the Czech uh, government uh, in the field of uh, social, uh, social and labor affairs, yeah? So, uh, we just uh, thought about it that much. Uh, in here, uh, the barrier is financial and time when it comes to job changes. So we need to make uh, the programs for uh, short-term unemployment much better working for the people. We have low uh, 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 support in short-term unemployment in here, so we need to raise it. We need to change the structure of uh, uh, taking the money. And we need to enable people, let's say, in terms of two or three months, not only to search job opportunities when they are unemployed, we need to help them upskill. So it's about the money invested in their upskilling as well. Many of the people can't afford that. So it's about the funding from uh, the state and, for example, larger scales like European Union or others. Uh, we see that if we uh, let it only on companies, they will solve the current needs, uh, just the routines right now, the effectivity right now, uh, the job roles they have right now, not the future. So, for example, when it comes to uh, digital skills, et cetera, we need to invest uh, also from other sources. And the last thing is that, that we need to enable companies and people to not only learn something new, it's happening right now, there is a lot of people learning something new in Czech Republic as well, uh, including short-term unemployment, but we need to promote job opportunities for juniors in higher age especially yeah when you are 40 or 50 and you are starting second career or you are shifting uh, significantly uh, when it comes to your, your job role we need to have junior and graduate positions for those people because we don't right now yeah so it has to be about the possibility not only to learn but to start a job and it has to be funded as well from the state yeah there has to be some motivation for companies to invest time and money in juniors who are 50, 60 years old, yeah? because there will be a lot of them. If we don't do that, we, have, uh, we will have for sure raising unemployment with more people pushed out of the market. 
And on the other hand, we will have raising number of vacant job positions, which we all are, which we will be not able to fill from the labor market. Yeah. So we have to inter inter interconnect it uh, from the from the state as well. Okay. Last question here. No. 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 <laughs> okay. That wasn't the last question. Thank you, Tomas, so much. <laughs>